<laughs> and we'll talk about number six. That, 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 this idea that you've got this, you know, sword swinging, you know, badass number six, who's <laughs> somewhere between an avenging angel and a terminator. I don't know whether there was references, reference points for you that you spoke about that you wanted to get. Yeah, um, there was a couple of films that I watched. Um, I watched the Mad Max series. I thought that uh, Mel Gibson was definitely someone I could look up to. And then uh, Angelina Jolie, I definitely channeled her work in Tomb Raider and Wanted. And she's very intimidating, but also enchanting and intoxicating. I think Six possesses those sort of qualities as well. I know for I think it was three months of, of four hours a day, six days a week, training to get into shape. I think and, and that, yes, but that was. that sort of notion. I think you only had one injury. A sword smacked you in the face at one point, but that, that's that's pretty good rate that, for, a, yeah. for the amount of fighting that goes on. I had that and I broke my little pinky toe. Ah, but, okay. So that was a little painful. And I always had you know black and blue legs, but it was my I, I guess they were my battle scars. I was really proud of them. I was thinking too with these movies inevitably there's certain kind of action lines that have to happen because you know you're in a fight with you know large creatures and you've got yeah. to you know jump on the back of a bat and stab it in midair all that kind of stuff yeah. but, but that I don't know whether it's easy to deliver those lines when you have a, have a line like you know hit me I need to power up which I think is uh, Tina Turner's old line she used to use it to Ike before she went on stage but that <laughs> <laughs> that notion of uh, having to sort of deliver lines like that is it you do you sort of think well, I'll do it straight do I do it tongue in cheek you know is there a certain you just have to go there you just have to commit 100% I mean there were some lines in there um and, I, you know, there's one line in particular, Red Bulls for pussies. And I was like, how do I say this in a way that makes it funny and not kind of weird? Um, you just have to put your head in it and just commit. Because as soon as you feel a bit funny about what you're saying, people will hear that in your reading and... Uh, it's not good. Well, you know, there's certain accents, uh, you know, Scottish, Australian, Irish, that you can say things like that and it sounds perfectly natural. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like just another day at the office. It's, yeah. It, it comes out pretty easy. I actually had to go in and Americanize some words, though, because my accent is so thick that some of the test audience couldn't understand what I was saying the whole time. So I had to change. Uh, one of my favorite lines was, lucky for you, I saved your ass. But I had to change it to, lucky for you, I saved your ass. Um, and I'm, I mean, I listen to that now and I cringe. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, notion too, that uh, here we're dealing with, I know that the, the director, Anne, uh, uh, said that, that, that uh, DJ said that he wanted somewhere between Rebel Without a Cause and Close Encounters and Starman and things like that are mixed yeah. in there. But for Joe and Joanna Sixpack, there's going to be an inevitable kind of, you know, relationship towards Twilight because you've got yeah, a kid who's an outsider alien in high school falls in love with a mortal chick and all that. And I don't know whether that was something that just you couldn't talk about on set, whether it was just became... Let's not go there because, you know, we're making our own movie and we don't want to be, you know, thinking about this other possible yeah. comparison. I mean, it's funny. Um, we really embrace the comparisons because those franchises like Harry Potter and also Twilight, they're so hugely successful. So to us, it's very flattering to be compared. But uh, we are our own film and it is different from Twilight. And um, But look, if people enjoy the film the way they enjoy it, uh, I think we'd all be very happy. I should. Uh, I know that with this movie, you have a good, good kind of solid career in Australia. You're that that big debut, two, three, seven, and then stuff like Restraint, and there was a you know December Boys, and and I, that move. You know your stuff. I hey, like this. It's my job. <laughs> but that move to LA, you know, you, you look at IMDb, and it says well, it's because of it, like a, a break of a two year relationship, and you just wanted to get out of there, or I don't know whether there was always an intention. Well, you know, you go to you know Newcastle if you want to call, you go to Hollywood yeah. if you want to make movies. Was it always that sort of plan about it? No, not at all. My life has been such a snowball since I went to Cannes with 237. And um, from that moment, I had no plans. Um, my manager plucked me from Cannes and said, you're coming to America. And I had just packed a bag um, for two weeks. And then I ended up staying there and I booked a couple of jobs. And it's been such a whirlwind. But it was never a conscious decision to move out there. I just uh, ended up staying. And it's the way it sort of turned out. Uh, that that uh, two very quick questions that you mentioned a little bit earlier on. Like I know you've got two movies coming up. One with, with Topher. You've got a uh, which one's that? Yeah, take me home take tonight. Take me home tonight. And you got to say nothing. The Australian drama. But yeah. but you're prepping and and uh, for uh, George Miller's sort of resurrecting Mad Max with Nicholas Holt and and you're in there. Now I, I've read that you can't really talk about it, but I don't know. Is, is there a sort of a notion of when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen? Or I think that film's on hiatus. Um, but at the moment, I am not attached to do it. I was in negotiations, but then there were scheduling conflicts, and now I know the film is uh, it's stopped for the time being. But oh. I did read the script, and it is phenomenal. I really think it's going to be the best Mad Max yet. And the very last thing, uh, you, you just before the cameras rolled, you mentioned 
wonderfully you're named after Mother Teresa and Mother Rose, Mary. Uh, Mother Mary. Uh, uh, is that an Irish thing? I don't know if there's a, like a, a, I mean, obviously very Catholic, but is it, I don't know if there's an Irish line because being very sexy and good, you know, charming and, and talented, I'm guessing. I'm be, must, must be from be. Ireland. It can't be. <laughs> my, par- my parents are from Surrey, actually. Ah, So, okay. um, yes, but they're very religious. So, uh, Mother Teresa and Mother Mary. And how do they feel about Hollywood? Because that's probably the very opposite of, when you think about religious and Hollywood, they're not exactly overlapping very often. Yeah, my mum, la- I mean, she's really excited for me. But the nice thing about my mum is she's just as proud of me now as she was when I was working at Burger King. And I like that. It's, um, it's very nice. Rock and roll. I'm giving the friendly finger. Thanks so nice much. to talk to you, kid. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.